Thank you, Sherry. Do it here. Do it again. Okay, everybody, we're going to go get the show started. So hopefully everyone's been fed. Hopefully everyone, everyone, if you're not fed yet, then go ahead and eat while we're going. But um, we're going to go ahead and get this started. So I'm pretty excited. I, I, uh, I always think it's funny when, when the theme comes out for our party like this and it was prom night and I'm thinking to myself, oh, my goodness, nobody wants to dress up for prom. Like, this is stupid. And then sure enough, Blown away by everybody in the room, the spirit in this room. Big round of applause for everyone for just being fun. And, and some people do it even, even more than you realize. Like Some people really come out of it. They're really pushing the envelope. And we got the, the mullet wigs. We got like Matt Wedding and uh, Jackie Wedding. She looks like Ariel, a peach Ariel from a mermaid show, like amazing. I think it's amazing. So great, really, really, really great job, Jackie. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, so of course, Matt Wedding, we, we talked about this earlier, and he's like, dude, I have, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to slap you. I'm like, I, you can't, I'm on blood thinners. I bruise really easy. You, you can't slap me. So, anyway. Welcome, everybody, Forever Chase. Uh, this is an exciting night. So we're going to walk through a little bit of uh, info on the company. This is not a big speech night. This is about recognizing some killer performances by teammates at Chase. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, help yourselves to drinks. You don't have to be worried about being all formal and stuff. But I want to say thank you to everyone for making time to come up the hill and be here and be a part of this really cool camaraderie event that we have. So thank you very much. And let's go ahead and get started. So why does this company exist? And it's this right here. It's building to make a difference. We always said if we could start a company, we could have a really cool company that had great people and great culture. We really felt like we'd be able to be successful as an organization. Ask our team to do great things with our clients, make the clients love us, keep calling us back for future work. And that is 100% what's happening. Uh, building to make a difference means tithing back to the community, doing cool things like this together, but also making a difference with philanthropy and making a difference in the community, supporting nonprofits and doing cool stuff in the community. So core values for the company, passion, partnership, and reputation. So I'm talking a little bit about some of the things, most of the Chase people have heard me talk about this stuff a lot. And tonight's spouse and significant other night, so I just want everyone to understand this is not just Chase teammates, this is families. Everyone's family is a part of the Chase family. And it's the coolest thing ever. And seeing everyone be here with the spirit that they have, like it is really one of the most moving things that I could ever, ever have asked to be a part of. So how cool is it? What makes us cool as a company? It's these right here. Being passionate in what we do. Having partnership, working with each other, working with our clients, working with our subcontractors really working with partnership. Last piece is reputation. So can I get all the spouses and significant others to please stand for a moment? Not Chase employees, Chase employees stay seated. All significant others, spouses. So this is a well-deserved round of applause. Thank you for putting up with the crazy hours that Chase people put into their projects but they are guardians of our reputation. Thank you spouses and significant others for supporting our teammates because it is amazing and it's not unnoticed. So thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> so built different on purpose, that's our mission as a company. We didn't want to be just a, some big old construction company, we wanted to be different. We wanted to be different on purpose and how is different on purpose? These are some of the names, this is the way we're gonna start defining what is it about us that we want to make sure we stay focused on as an organization? Let's not become a crappy corporate company like lots of other companies. Let's stay cool. 
Let's remember what got us successful to begin with, and let's not ever forget that. Super, super important to us as a company. So team, in the name for a reason. By day one, Chase Building team, by design, right? That's this group right here. Chase Hustle, this is the hustle that we do every day, each and every day on our projects. Leave the ego. If your ego's too big to get in the door, the exit is over there with the green sign. Go, go right out that exit. We don't want egos as a company, right? We're a team. There's, there's no I in team. Um, there's, someone did tell me there's an ass in Chase, though. <laughs> so, and I've been told I'm it, ass in Chase. That's what Ricky says anyways. Anyway, burn the boats, that's our passion, like to compete and, and do the best we can, compete against some really good firms in the valley, and we are doing it. Making history, that's our reputation. How are we making history as an organization? We're 14, 15 years into our company, and the things that we're accomplishing are truly amazing, and it's due to the fact that everyone is doing what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, choosing positive, that's the atmosphere. That's everything I see right now. Like, it's really funny to see a lot of you with your costumes on. That's the spirit, though. That's the special sauce of this company. Can't lose sight of it. Last is Chase Love. That's, that's not being afraid as a big, burly construction company to actually know we have to be a, a company that cares from the heart, to care for each other, to care for our clients, to care for our community. So built different on purpose means a few different things. It's culture taking care of our culture to make sure it's the best culture it can possibly be. Never take culture for granted. Uh, clients first, always. Right? We always want to deliver for our clients so they call us back. And building. How do we build better than anyone out there? And that's, again, the talent in this room. And it's the effort. And it's the passion behind this group. So cool company awards that we won. We won number one great place to work this last year. Kudos to everyone on that. <laughs> that, that, was, uh, that was really, really fun, um, un unexpected, and we were in the medium category, so it was a bigger category this year, and uh, it was just really cool. And, and again, that's it's a cool award, and you get a cool plaque, but it's something we all should really take uh, a lot of pride in, right? It doesn't happen by accident. Um, and I'd love to be able to tell you that I actually just filled out all your surveys, and we did it through IT uh, sophistication or Russian hacking or something like that, but... Truly, everyone in the room votes and puts feedback into the system, and we came up number one on top. So round of applause to everyone. That's super cool. <laughs> so here's some projects that got some recognition. We're going to recognize some teams, uh, teammates and projects tonight. But here are some cool projects that won recognitions throughout a lot of different ways. And I know I missed some, but I'm going to read through these. Dove Mountain. School, West Point High School, the Astor, Heidi's Village, John McCain Elementary School, and January 8th. So <clears throat> just real quick, can I get teammates that were a part of these projects just to stand for a moment and be recognized for really cool recognitions? <laughs> People are being bashful. Anyway, su super, super cool to get the recognitions like that. Like, people notice this, and uh, a lot of people are noticing what our company's doing. And again, it's as a result of everything that's happening within this room. Um, <clears throat> so this one is a little bit of a, um, was a little bit of a shocker to me. So this was us by the numbers of the last few years. So it's over two years since we've had this event. Um, because of the pandemic. Um, what pandemic? Oh, wait, it's over. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to be all political and stuff. So, anyways, the January of 2020 was the last time we were able to be here, and we weren't here, we were in Prescott. But this is where we've come as an organization in, in the period of time, 2019, 2020, 2021. And I want you to focus on, for a second, the number of teammates in the organization. And you can see the growth that's been happening in the number of teammates inside of our organization. It's pretty eye-opening to see how many new people have joined the company since the last time we were at an event like this. And, and, and for fun, so the last time we did this was at Hacienda. New employees at Chase that have never been to 
this event, can you please stand? Just want to get an idea of magnitude. <clears throat> so, so what I want to say welcome new teammates to uh, the Chase annual party. Um, but I also want to say to the Chase teammates that have been here for a long, long time, notice how many people stood up right there. Right? We have a big responsibility to make sure we're connecting and meeting each other, getting to know each other. That's the whole point of this kind of event, is to recognize some really amazing performances by people, but even more than that, it's getting to know each other. And <clears throat> I think seven years ago, we did a, the wigging out party. Was it seven or eight years ago? It was before you? What? <laughs> so that's seven or eight years ago then. And I remember it was wigging out, so it was in Prescott, and everyone wore wigs like, like Mike Morton, like seriously. And I remember at the night, like I'm going, wait a second, I, I don't know who anybody was that I talked to because they were all wearing these crazy wigs, and I'm like, this missed the point of camaraderie. So anyway, so I'm thinking prom night, that should be fine, and I'm like, oh no, here we go again. There's so many people, I'm looking at you going, I don't know who you are actually, I don't know, actually know who you are under that wig. So anyway. Um, I, I just want to say this is really important to us as, as a collective team, like new people to the organization and those that have been in the organization for a long time. There's nothing more important to make sure we are making everybody feel welcomed, onboarded, cared for, valued. Um, I asked the old guard to take care of the new guard. I asked the new guard to get to know the old guard. Like, we're one people. It doesn't matter if you've been here for one month or for 11 years, and we're going to celebrate some 11-year people today. So. Welcome everybody. So th this growth has been crazy. Uh, you, know, you can see the revenue growth that's happened in an organization, and, uh, and it's hard right now, right? So that's why I wanted to recognize spouses because it's a significant challenge to get projects built right now. It's a lot harder than it used to be. Supply chain, subcontractor challenges, getting the materials that we want, how are we honoring our subcontractor commitments? It's a big deal. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh my goodness. <coughs> okay, so, sorry, I didn't even realize it at first, but where is Shepard? I haven't seen Shepard. Where is he? Car problems, seriously? Like, anyway. Uh, so these are people that have, uh, in the past, already received their 11-year recognition. So they're 11-year veterans of the organization or longer, stand up, be recognized, 11 year plus. <clears throat> so now we're gonna recognize 11 year teammates that are here tonight. So, well, well, well here, here's the only, Sherry, come on up. Dan Mengini, come up, Dan, where is he? Where's Dan? Andy Gooding, come on. Andy. And Kim Clark, I don't think I saw Kim, but we're gonna roast her on Monday. Here, come over there. So, 11 years, if you're new to the company, you're like, why are we so celebrating? <laughs> so, when you're in the company for 11 years, why 11? Like, why don't we celebrate 10? We celebrate 11. And it's getting built different on purpose, right? We don't want to celebrate 10. We want to celebrate 11. We want to be different. So, 11-year employees get a sabbatical. They get a a big suitcase full of cash. <laughs> so here's a big suitcase full of cash. And there, there's a, I don't know who's, the, there's, there's three other, there's more over there, but I'm just kidding, there's no cash in that. But when you're ready to schedule your sabbatical, the company provides a big time travel stipend for your sabbatical as a thank you to your amazing years of service. So thank you very much, 11 years chasers.
I'm going to go back. Uh, I made a little note, and I forgot to mention this. Um, you know, t tonight's not about, you know, we talk about no egos in our organization, and, uh, and we really try to, try to really honor that. And, but, I, but I'd be remiss to not recognize there's a lot of leaders inside a Chase Building Team, inside a Chase Building Team, and many of you know who you are. This is not about you and us tonight. Um, it's about our, all of our teammates, but I wanted to say a big heartfelt thank you to the Chase leaders for helping us accomplish what you see right here. It's been amazing. <laughs> all right, I'll get back to this. Okay, so now, <laughs> this is kind of a pisser though. Due to COVID, the bobbleheads did not arrive in time. Supply chain issues. They're made in, they're made in China. We're going to have to work on that. So, but we have uh, 16 uh, Chase teammates uh, that are going to be recognized tonight uh, with the, the bobblehead anniversaries. And we're going to get the bobbleheads at some point whenever the boat comes in or whatever. have a bobblehead happy hour. So if I could get uh, this group on the slide here to come on up for a photo, bobbleheads to be determined. <clears throat> Blair Esslinger, Ben Dahlman, Bree Lewis, Dennis Flynn, Dom Burge, John Tice, Jordan Simmons, Ken Baker, Kim Clark, Lisa War, Matt Graver, Mike Cervantes, Mike Morton, Shiree Rustler, Susan Rojas, Tim Goyette. And Cooper Haskins. Cooper, get up there. Where is he? Susan! Oh, there you go. So, so, so where the bobblehead thing came from, so where the bobblehead thing came from is uh, people were asking like, oh, we've been in this company for five years, what do we get? I know, I know, we're working on it. So I said like, what do we get after five, well, after, f what's that? So what do you get after five years? People would be like, what do we get after five years? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> like, and then we're like, no, we gotta do something stupid. So we said, we're gonna get bobbleheads. So in the office, you got a shelf full of bobbleheads for folks that have been here five years. And that is all you get, so enjoy it. <laughs> so, so in addition, so uh, in 2020, uh, where's Joe in his cool varsity jacket? Joe Hitzel, will you stand up please? Where's Joe? There he is. That is authentically the coolest varsity jacket I think I've ever seen. So Joe and I did something really cool together, and Joe is getting ready to do his retirement dance, and uh, we were able to do something meaningful with his company, SAB, integrating it inside a Chase building team. So we're thrilled about this. And 
So we had a debate uh, going, well, wait a second. No, so Joe's team has been in SAB for most of them for 10 years plus. So what do we do? How are we going to recognize this? Should they get bobbleheads or not? Or do they start from zero? What do we do? So we've decided, hands down, the SAB team all gets bobbleheads. And here's the SAB. Come on up, SAB team. We got Jill Brindley, Jim Class, Sheila Gardner, Karen Nichols, Martin Ortiz, Timo Conde, Ray Martinez, Mike Yorston, Dave Rezab, Whitney White, and Joe Hitzel retired, but he still wants the bobblehead. <laughs> woo, woo, woo! Woo, 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 woo. Joe, is that actually your, your jacket from high school? Oh my goodness, that is so cool. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to move uh, a little bit into a, another, another segment of the program. I got a couple, this is, this is random, so bear with me. Who shots? Well, not yet. Not, not until I'm done. Um, so I got one here. This is random. There's no official award thing for other awards. There'll be official awards. But, so I've personally made a, a, a thing on a $100 bill. This one is for Brie. And I wrote Party Girl. Thank you, Brie, for... She, she puts, she and others put so much into these kind of events, and I don't think we all realize how much work it takes. Thank you, Bree. You're amazing. Um, let's see. I got another one here, and this one is just this is random because I don't know if you guys realize I'm I'm a, not uh, that easy to work with at times. I'm pretty heavy ADHD. It's it's uh, I can be I'm a heavy lift. Put it that way. So. It, Ricky's that's a good that's a good thought, but but I'm going with the uh, Shayana Pool. <laughs> Where's Shayana? She's shy. She won't want to come up here. But you have to come up here, Shayana. So I I so the word I wrote, and it makes me think of the Polar Express. Remember when Santa punches a thing into a ticket, right? So the the word I punched into her hundred dollar bill is special. She puts up with a lot, and I've never seen her mad. Nelson, have you ever seen her mad? Because I've never seen her mad. Yeah, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about some other stuff here for a second, but there's one other, uh, one other thing that uh, it's a huge thing, and a lot of things were happening this last year. You know, we did the big uh, employee ownership announcement in November of uh, or December. Second, 12, two, 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 whatever it was. And uh, at the spring training, uh, and it was a huge amount of work that went into that process. Um, and so I have the word, a $100 bill here and a word that I wrote. And the word is stud. Jason Switz, will you come up? So if you ever really want to know how much work went into this actual employee ownership plan and how much, how much work, it was Jason and the accounting team and many others, it was a lot. So Jason, on behalf of all the teammates at Chase, thanks, man. I got one more. Um, so it was uh, 14 or 15 years ago. I forget how old we are. Sydney, how old is our company? I don't remember how 14 or 15, 16 maybe. So when, when we weren't sure if we were gonna, what we were gonna do. And uh, 
So we prayed about it. What are we going to do? Ricky and I prayed. What, should we start a company? Should we not? Should I just go to work for McCarthy or should I start a company? What should I do? What should, what should I do? What should we do? I wrote down something for Ricky, and it's gutsy. You were more gutsy to let me try. And, and let me tell you, like, people don't realize how much Ricky's fingerprints are all over this company. When we started, we had nobody. It was just she and I. She did the accounting. She did marketing proposals. She did everything. And to continue to this day to just do whatever it takes to help this company achieve all it's achieved. So this is my big thing. Thank you, honey. Ricky wants to give a speech. <laughs> no, seriously, that was a huge deal. And, um, you know, it's, it's been challenging and fun, but so rewarding. And uh, to see our company do so many really cool things. And again, I go back to the ambiance that I feel tonight. Uh, there's nothing cooler than this. And I, I think we're just getting started. Like, we're just really getting started. We're in our 14th or 15th year. And there's so many amazing things happening in this company. So I just think we got a lot to celebrate. Um, so when we did the, uh, the TSOP, we call it the teammate uh, stock ownership plan. So I want to talk just a hair about this, and then we're going right into awards. So the coolest thing about this is we don't have to change anything we've done or anything we do moving forward. And we know for sure now this company has its long-term ownership solution in place. So never does anyone in this room have to worry about us or our company selling to some big old corporate crappy company that's going to not value and appreciate this uniqueness that we have that we see here tonight. So to me, that's a huge, huge fundamental. So what does this mean in reality? It really doesn't mean anything. Some people have said, well, well, well let me back that up. Let me, let me walk back my statement. Um, sorry, I'm not being political. Um, what this means is the 100% of the future of our organization is in the hands of the people in this room. And I think that's a really, really cool, cool thing and not something to lose sight of. Um, we don't have to worry about um, outside threats. We have to be great. We have to follow through on our core values and our mission and purpose and work hard and do all those great things. But truly, the future is in our hands. So our vision doesn't have to change. It's a great team focusing on our culture. Great builder, be great at what we do. Great clients, let's work with great clients, let's do a great job for our clients, they're gonna call us back. That doesn't change at all. The only thing that changes now is who owns it? It's not me, it's everyone in this room. And that's a huge thing for everybody. <laughs> so when this, uh, when this happened, uh, all the work that Jason and the marketing team, the accounting team, the marketing work that went into it, the whole efforts to actually orchestrate the whole thing. So now it's 100% owned by all of us in the organization. And, and why, why is that a big deal? And why did it happen now? Um, quite frankly, it would have been a lot better for me personally to wait 10 years and do it in 10 years. I'd just keep making all the profits in this organization and pocketing them all, Ricky and I'd pocket all those profits for 10 more years, and then we'd make it an ESOP. But then it's not in the hands of everyone in this room for those 10 years. And I'm a big believer in the people that work in the company, that impact the company, and make the company great, need to benefit and be rewarded for their efforts. So now everyone in this room is an owner of the company. And what is, why did we do it? What's important about that? One, let me start by saying one thing when people are saying, well, that means eh, Barry's retiring. Seriously, would I wear this jacket if I was going to retire? Like, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> Although, actually, I think it's cool. It's really soft. In it. Anyway. <laughs> so why are we doing it, and why are we doing it now? It's to make sure we get this and really integrate this ownership mentality inside of our organization so on the move forward, we just get stronger and better collectively. And each and every person in this room has a much increased a financial incentive in making sure that we're doing what we need to as a company to be great. 
this is our expectations. If I was going to wave a magic wand of what I'm hoping that we accomplish as a collective group, it's this. Commitment to safety. Let's be great at safety. No, we don't want anyone in this room ever injured or hurt. We don't want any of our trade partners or anyone on our job sites hurt or injured. Let's be great at safety. Great clients. Do a great job for our clients. We know how important that is. That's been a huge part of our business in getting us to where we are. Great builder, do whatever it takes. What do we have to do to make sure we're having to deal with so much more building our jobs right now? We have to continue to do that. Otherwise, there's a lot of contractors wanting to steal our market share. I promise you that. Great team, it's we not me mentality. Super important as we work and we, we move forward. Let's make sure we're all invested in culture. It's heart-based leadership. We talked about that a little early. It's a culture of caring. Let's not, we've got a lot more people in the organization. We didn't fit into the Hacienda this year. We're here. It doesn't really matter where we celebrate as long as we never lose sight of culture and how important that is in our organization. The day we lose sight of culture is the day we start to become just like all the other companies that are out there. And that would be, that'd be a fail. That's non-negotiable for us. We've got to do this together, become even better and great as we move forward. The last piece is recruit and care for our teammates. Like That's not a department. There's a people and a culture department at Chase Building Team. But this is the people and culture department right here. Care for each other, support each other, give kudos to each other, value each other. Um, that's how we, we maintain having a great culture and a move forward. So this is what I'm asking of everyone. Like, how do we move into this next era for our company? You're going to see some significant opportunities. I'm trying to think of a way to articulate this. Um, and we're working on some calculators and things like that. but. A lot of people have said, well, what, truly, what is the, the TSOP or an ESOP? What really is it? What, what does it mean to me in the room? What, people are wondering, what does it really mean? We haven't been able to say much concrete, and we're learning how we can actually tell you more specific. But I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a concept of an illustration. So we have goals as an organization. We have revenue goals, like you saw on that slide before. We have profit goals because, you know, Profit's not a dirty word. We have to make money as an organization. That's how we throw parties like this. Um, what was the budget for this, by the way? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so we have to make profit. And, and again, we all have vested interest in that. Um, <clears throat> but as we move forward, everyone has a financial interest in helping us to make sure we are on track towards meeting and exceeding those goals. So I'm going to try and illustrate an example. If you t think about it for a second and chase, chase teammates. Think about your, your pay. Um, think about your salary. And if you're in a bonus, uh, your, your role is in a bonus conversation, take your salary, add your bonus, do the math in your head. What is that number? 50,000, whatever, 100,000. I don't know what that number is. It's e different for each, each and every person. Um, take that number and if we can successfully, as an organization, work to our goals, meet our goals, exceed our goals, um, we have the opportunity to be very, very strong financially as a team. So what does it mean to you as a teammate? Take that number that's in your head, that salary and bonus, and after 10 years, what does your ESOP account potentially look like if we meet our goals over the next 10 years? You take that salary and bonus, and you multiply it by about four to five. That's what's going to be sitting inside of your ESOP account. It's significant. Yeah. Significant. I, and, I'm, and we're going to be able to, you'll start to see the statements and all this stuff start flowing. I just want people to understand the gravity and the magnitude of what we're talking about. And that's if we just meet our goals. and We set conservative goals as an organization by design. If we overachieve, which when you see the slides, like I showed you on our revenue of what we've done in the past three years, we've over exceeded our goals every year for the last how many years? I'm not betting against this group. So I hope that those outcomes can be even more significant. Now, vice versa, if we shit the bed as an organization and we just do horrible and we don't make any profits and our revenue's way down, well, your ESOP account's gonna suck. So. We can't let that happen, right? It's the opposite. We're doing just what we've been doing. Nothing changes. Great team, great builder, great client. Nothing changes in that. Ownership mentality amongst this room. 
is what's going to propel us into that next, next level. So I'm excited about it. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of concept, a magnitude of what this is, and you're going to start to see more as we move forward. So, all right, we're going to move into awards. So, yeah, I'm with you. Hold on now, bear with me. I got a lot of cash here, and I got a lot of envelopes, and this is, well, this is two years worth of stuff since we didn't have uh, one in 2021. All right, let's see. All right, we're going to start with Great Team Award. And I'm going to have to read some, uh, some remarks. So I captured some remarks by these uh, award recipients. There's individuals and there's teams. And I'm going to just read some of the comments that came from why this individual or the project uh, is getting this accomplishment. So this individual, I might need some people to help me with this. I do. OK. This individual joined us not too long ago, 2019. Came to Chase a few years ago, very green to the construction industry, always one of the first in the office. Uh, he flirts heavily with the receptionist. Uh, <laughs> Grind, grinds away, <laughs> sorry, this is not, not on the reception. Grinds away on budgets and estimates. <laughs> navigating each challenge the wild market brings us. Has now officially been through the uh, pre-con on two jobs with one specific uh, client who never misses a detail, never forgets a discussion, will get deep into the weeds of the estimate. The client that will ultimately make you a better pre-con teammate was requested again, uh, back again by the client, and a favorite fan of the CEO of Hello. So, we're going to bring up Matt Lee. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, look, look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, I don't even need to be in this one. Wait, hold on. What are we doing here? <laughs> it's getting really awkward now. It's getting really awkward. No, I'm just and in, and in, in, you know incredibly gr grateful for you know everything that I've been given. You know, obviously I was very green in the industry, and you know Barry and um, another person who couldn't join us today, and that's uh, Jeremy Keck. They, <laughs> you know, they gave me an opportunity, and um, I'm just gonna make the best of it. So, cheers to Jeremy. Now you guys understand the rumors about the receptionist. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, so this individual, oh, I got another one, hold on. So this individual joined the Chase family also in 2019. Uh, immediately jumped right in, a true self-starter, true team player, and is always willing to help. She's a great mentor, it's a she, and elevates those around her. This person is very efficient, reliable, well-rounded, and overall a model Chase employee. Most importantly, she's the only person at Chase who can keep the team and Matt Wedding in line. Corey Logan! Okay, <clears throat> when John Norba and um, Christy, our P project engineer, left us, the uh, Pima Community College was in a bind. The project accounting and documentation was a mess. This person jumped in and helped without question. He helped create uh, a pro get the project back organized and back on track, 
and always willing to help, participates in all of our community engagement in Southern Arizona efforts outside of work. He's a team player all day long, Rich Richards. Okay. Sorry, we can bear with me. All right, so, oh my goodness, a run of people that came in 2019. So this person joined us in 2019, a true builder at heart, no shiny shoes for him. I don't make these comments, I'm just sharing what people have said. <laughs> he could be a great builder, a great client, or a great team award recipient, pretty cool. Amazing demeanor, collaboration, coordination, always brings the passion and energy to the project. Clients love him and request him back. Um, with Chase, I'm gonna hold on this one. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Um, decided to stay and uh, do last minute turnover on a project when his baby was about to be born. With Chase, started with a small nasty remodel for LA Fitness in town and country then AMS South Mountain, then Buckeye Elementary School, the John McCain School, incredibly challenging projects, eight months, uh, which was not enough time, amazing. Procurement Challenges, high profile project, also Desert Meadows at Levine, JP McLaughlin, great builder. Okay, stop talking amongst yourselves now. Uh, all right, this person. Stepped up uh, in 2021. Uh, added additional resources to his team due to supply and demand of opportunities that we were working on as an organization. It's hard to read these notes without giving it away too early. Uh, There's no way I can sneak around on this one. So, stepped up in 2021 to lead the multifamily housing pre-construction services. Uh, in the lead pre-con role, he's enhanced our existing client relationships and been instrumental in establishing Chase as a premier multifamily housing builder in Arizona. Currently leading pre-construction efforts on about 700 million in new work. Sorry, sorry. That was a drop the mic moment. Uh, providing pricing and budgeting support on numerous developments totaling about 1.3 billion. Uh, Jake has embraced the synergy of pre-construction services with operations resulting in best in class deliverables to our customers. None other than Jake Bennett, Jesus, my friends. Okay, great client award. So, <clears throat> this person quickly established trust with a demanding client after a project leadership change. Uh, takes full responsibility for every aspect of his projects and works hard to execute at a high level. Has an immense amount of personal pride in his work and which reflects positively to the project team and ownership. Willing to dive headfirst into any problem and work quickly to find creative solutions. Clients, subcontractors, and Chase teammates quick, quickly recognize and view him as a team leader. Welcome to the stage, Adam Johnson. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to the next, a great client award. Clients love her. That's a hint. Has a way of establishing trust and respect and connection on a personal level. Passion for unique project types. 
uh, leveraged relationships and experience to develop several excellent long-term capture strategies with key clients. Sky Harbor fire alarm, Sky Harbor conveying elevator moving walks, <laughs> cap projects north of 50 million in backlog. Welcome to the stage, Susan Rojas. She totally, she totally made me cry. I'm totally crying right now. I don't know why. Way to go, Susan. Okay. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know. I don't know what's going on with me. Um, okay. This is Chase Love Award. So the Chase Love Award is about, uh, you know, we talk about, there's so many projects that could and should be getting recognized tonight. Um, but this one represents a team that really, really dazzled a client, really dazzled a client, and put a lot of effort into dazzling the client. Um, <coughs> I'm going to read my notes. Uh, won over a very large um, international client. Um, there's a huge amount of potential with this client now as a result of the effort that this team put in in delivering a really cool project. Um, they have a great, this client has a great culture, fully aligned with our team. Um, <coughs> they want to negotiate exclusively on all future work on their national headquarters as well as locations throughout the county. They're doing everything they can to keep our team from actually leaving their corporate headquarters site. So they're feeding us projects just to keep our team going. Um, many fun team uh, events, in, including like, like, there was like, what do you call that? Spinning or what do you, when you're riding bikes or something like that? Anyway, it's a spinning event, uh, things like that. So I want to give a big um, heartfelt appreciation to the entire U-Haul team. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Jaime Vidalis, Wyatt Formo, Rusty Deal, Amanda Barkenbush. <laughs> Game changer is... Uh, so Game Changer is something that we reflect on our organization, a project that has really moved the needle for us uh, in, a, in, in way different ways. Uh, there's not like a certain metric we follow with this. But it's a project that has done something really significant um, for our organization and really set a tone for us moving forward. So, oh, I, I gotta pull this up, hold on. <coughs> I'm not checking my phone, I'm actually pulling up a, checking the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> my ESOP account's terrible low, you guys get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I need one more drink. Um, okay, so this project, massive undertaking of project. Uh, and when I first heard what we were actually gonna try and do in this project, I'm like, Wait, what? What are we trying to do? Uh, renovated 70,000 square feet in less than eight weeks. $19 million worth of work in two months. Uh, Pre-planning, off the chart, uh, the whole winter prior, pre-ordering material, 10 Connex boxes with materials on site and stored, mechanical equipment sitting uh, and waiting, ready to go for the last day of school. So the school is out, they went after it in a huge way. At its peak, 300 plus workers on site any given day, seven days a week for the entire project. Fast tracked with lean procurement, submittal review, procurement return $900,000 in savings. Additionally, installed entire new parking lot, volleyball courts, tennis courts, etc. Uh, Pre construction, master planned the entire campus of about $100 million worth of work from the pre con team. Utilized target value design concept with the design team and owner to manage the design and budget. Hosted multiple trade partner appreciation lunches and, and barbecues. The Game Changer Award for this project team is the Mountain View High School Phase 1. Chris Strange, Mike Diaz, Mario Renteria, James Salazar, Jordan Simmons, Julian Zamora, Vicente Teran, Diego Passmore, John Cheek, Matt Lee. Come on up, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I think, um, 
I think this is the, the last one for the night. Now again, we have some folks that are going to recognize some awards that we're going to try and do a sneaky surprise for them next week. Uh, but for tonight, there's one more Game Changer award. And <clears throat> so this project, um, oh, shoot, it's hard. For, I hate to give it away right out of the gate, but I have to give this one away a little bit. This is a really tough project, tough client, demanding client, complicated project, uh, long project, right in the face of COVID, all material escalation, subcontractor saturation, really complicated. 31-month um, duration, August 19 to April 22, for 348 units, five levels of wood frame apartments, uh, leasing club room, fitness, elevated pool and courtyards, tough, tough client. Um, two levels of above grade parking, virtually no land, uh, virtually zero lot line project where we had to build in urban downtown Phoenix. One level subterranean below grade parking, a full city block. Um, awesome, awesome effort. Game Changer Award, the Fillmore team. We got Stan Chapman, Sean Chapman, Mike Morton, Bear Esslinger, Dennis Seidel, Chad Berry, Adam Johnson, Steve Cochran, Amanda Barkenbush, and Jake Bennett. Let's go, people. Now, if you can't be trusted with those extra envelopes, I'll take them back if you, okay, you, I trust you. <clears throat> okay, so I, I'd just like to say again, like, tonight's a night that I recognize, um, it's a small recognition of some people and some projects that have done, done really meaningful work for the company. Um, but truly, everyone in this room is uh, part of where we are as an organization and everyone deserves recognition and, and appreciation and heartfelt appreciation from me and others inside of this organization for what you all do. You pour yourselves into what you do, your heart and soul into these projects and you are the people that are making our reputation strong and I can't thank you all enough. Um, thank you all for coming up tonight. Um, I think the bars stay open for quite some time. Some, pe <laughs> some people are going to go downtown Flagstaff. I'm not, and I'm not doing shots. <laughs> I, uh, I celebrate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for what you do for this company. Uh, you're amazing people. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.